Don't really know what it is. Probably a catfish, I'm guessing. But we'll see. Oh my god. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Revamped Outdoors. It's been like three months or something since I did another video. And uh, don't know why that happened. Just happens. Life gets in the way. So... Today I figured we'd do something a little bit different, uh, switching up the channel. I'm going to do a fishing video mixed in with how I made the bait. I only fished with lures that I designed and made myself, poured the lead for the jigs, painted the jigs, and also poured the soft plastics and fished with the soft plastics. So I'll go over really quickly what I used in that video, just going over quickly how I made it. You can see how I've done this on this channel back in the day search through those videos there's tons of them like that's what i do on this channel so i just thought i'd kind of mix it in here a little bit because the footage i got from fishing my mic wasn't working and it was just a disaster every time i record a fishing video it's just it's a disaster so we'll go over this a little quickly through here if you want to like a more in-depth process on this there are other videos on my channel so we'll just jump into it right away so i use fusion 360 to design with uh, jumping into it now with some of the updates that I've seen here, there's this editable, 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 whatever. It allows you to edit up to 10 documents at a time for free now. Otherwise you have to subscribe. I'm not really liking the whole model they're trying to do this with. They originally said they were going to get rid of the step files and stuff. Just a whole nother video. I don't know if I really appreciate this much. It's running a little slower now. Anyway, it's what we got to work with. So this is a Ned rig. Uh, if you're familiar with fishing, this is a Ned rig. I don't know what to tell you. It's just a small little drop bait kind of uh, jig head. This is what I originally designed. I got a video of this down below. If you wanted to see the in-depth process of that, go check that video out. Same way I made this, I made the other one. I'm going to be using a one ot Mustad hook for this. That hook is the same as on this Ned rig. So basically I just designed this, uh, what I did for this jig around this Ned rig. So... We'll just go through kind of what I did really quickly. It's not that complicated. It's the same as, like I said before, the same as we've done before. Um, nothing too fancy here. What I'm doing is I'm just making a mold that I can use to cut out, uh, essentially pour in silicone. So I'm making a positive version of this mold and then that version is going to be printed in 3D printer. Then I can pour in silicone, remove the silicone, and use it for lead. Basically, this this design is a very simple jig design. Let's see if I can't find like the actual body sections of it. There we go. So this jig design is very simple. Uh, it's based loosely off a, a kind of a swim bait design that uh, me and a buddy saw some guides using on the Mississippi River, Upper Mississippi River for walleye. Very simple design. It's more sleek, kind of like uh, a skinny football hit, head jig for uh, bass, but we're using this for specifically walleye bottom bouncing type scenario. And it has a little small cutout here in the back that allows the soft plastic to go in. So. What I'm doing here is just designing this jig up. Once I have that, I'm replicating the body, going all the way through, making five of those, making a mold then, a positive version of this on either side. Silicon, silicon gets poured into this, both sides, and then you can use that uh, together to make a mold like this. And then what I do is I pour lead in from a lead production pot. Like I said, if you're familiar with the channel, you've seen this all the time. But that's just basically how this jig came about. So I figured I would just at least mix in a little bit of Fusion 360, let you know that this was all 3D printed, then silicone molded, and then poured in lead, and then in the lip of a fish. So uh, I guess I'll just send you to past Elliot, who probably looks a little different, and you probably can't hear anything because the audio sucks. And then uh, maybe I'll recap at the end and uh, just say a little bit something about the future of the channel and all that. So Okay, so... Minor issues here today so far. Uh, I upgraded my phone, got to an S20. Great, awesome, sounds good. Just a great, great addition, Elliot. You're making life, you're making moves, good for you. Problem is, problem, problem is, uh, the S20 doesn't have a mic 
uh, slots or headphone jacks. So um, right now I'm trying to experimental Bluetooth headset recording. So we'll see how it goes. Let's grab the rods. All right, so today we are on one of my favorite lakes in the country. Uh, I absolutely love it. This is Petenwell Lake, central Wisconsin. Beautiful lake, uh, man-made, so uh, it's an inundated uh, water body, the Wisconsin River, which is an amazing river if you're ever around, uh, just to go see some cool stuff. So today they said five mile an hour winds. Turns out, not true. These right here, these white lines, don't know if you're gonna be able to see them or not, those are called Langmuir circulations. It's actually when the water turns like this uh, as the wind blows it. Generally, Langmuir circulations occur when there's a lot of wind. So we got a lot of wind. So today I'm gonna to be focused on catching walleyes. And for that setup, what I'm using here is a seven foot medium heavy. It's a medium, not really heavy at all, but it's uh, it's been through the ringer for a while. so. Uh, it's a little bit loosey-goosey. I'll go with a, like a medium light on it. Uh, and we're just going to use an Abu Garcia here. This is my old trusty reel. This is a spinning rod setup, meaning it's all on the bottom. If you already know this, you know this. This is a uh, eight pound monofilament line. A lot of people don't like mono because it stretches. That's the exact reason why I like it. Uh, it's relatively strong for its diameter and it stretches quite a bit. This is a custom made jig. Uh, that I made uh, designed for. It's mostly for swim baits and running this stiletto. Uh, this stiletto is a blown motor stiletto. Uh, this is a custom design as well on the channel. You can see me talk about uh, this a little bit in the mold video, like molds over the last couple of years. But I have this uh, custom made jig here in a couple different sizes. So we're gonna try and beef that up, I think, because it's a little bit windy out. So. That's the basic setup, nothing real special. We're gonna be doing some bottom bouncing today. I did fish this lake a little earlier uh, in the week. Actually, not the week, like two weeks ago. A week ago now? I don't even know what day it is, so it's hard to keep track anymore. Fished this lake a while ago, and uh, I used to have a lot of success going up on top of humps and stuff. And this last time I was out here, ended up catching them down in the deeper water at the toe kind of the hump. So as it starts coming up. So I'm gonna try that today. I'm gonna to walk it in with spot lock because I have absolutely no chance of walking around when the wind is, is this strong. So what I'm gonna try and do is just essentially walk, fish a spot for about 10 minutes, walk it up another 50 feet, try and get up on top. I'll cast around a little bit. That's why we're gonna go with a little bit uh, heavier jig, I'm thinking this one is about an eighth of an ounce. We might move it up to about a five sixteenths or so, almost like a quarter, a little bit heavier than a quarter. So uh, we might be able to keep it down on the bottom a little better. So we're spot locked right here, and this is uh, goes from 26 feet up to about six up here. So what we're going to do is just kind of walk it up there. If I don't catch fish, I'll move in a little. If I don't catch fish, move in. Let's switch that jig out for something a little bit heavier. Um, so we got a couple different jig options here. I am going to probably go with that 5 16th, like I was saying. I'm going to probably go a little darker. This red and black sort of color. Uh, this is, well, it's not really black. It's a dark, dark green. So it's a dark green with red flake. I'm going to try that out with a blown engine stiletto. If anybody's been watching the channel for a while, you know what the blown engine is. This is blown engine. It's kind of a translucent black, large gold flake with uh, small silver and gold flakes. So, so I'm just going to thread it up the hook like I would a worm. Push it over that little wire keeper I got on there. And then the presentation I'm going to try and go for for the fish is like that. So we'll give it a go. We'll see what happens. I'm going to try and get it all the way down to the bottom. And then we're going to set the timer on the helix. 
So I'm going up maybe like a foot or two and then down. And I'm, well, that's more than a foot or two. Going up about two feet and then back down. And I'm hope and I'm trying to go to where I can feel it hit bottom. And then I'm just waiting for anything to change. Either the line goes slack, not in that same pattern. So like as if it were to be being lifted off the bottom or I'm waiting for it to feel a bump or something like that. So we'll just see what happens. This is has the potential to be a very boring video, but you never know. A lot of people complain about spot lock not keeping you in one spot. Like when like on a variable windy day spot lock has a very hard problem because the wind will push you just a little bit. Enough. There he is. Look at that, boys. First drop down. First drop down. Come on. You serious right now? Are you serious right now? This is crazy. I bet you it's a sheephead. I bet you. Yep, sheephead. That's all right, though. First drop down. I'll take it. Cool. Calm down, calm, calm down. Sheephead, also known as freshwater drum. Okay, I need the, gonna need the old hemostats. Pull it out of there. Freshwater drum gets a bad rap. I think they're awesome. I don't know what people's problem are. All right, buddy. We'll see you later. Okay. So, that's at least promising. I do know every few times that I, I go fishing out here uh, in this kind of choppiness, the more drum I catch and the more bycatch of catfish seems to hold other fish. So I'm hoping that walleye's be in there too. Well, that's a promising little start to the day, I suppose. Means we might be on the right track, at least color choices too. So I'm going to throw another blown motor on there. That one got a little bit tore up. So on this jig design, we'll go through that real quick too. On this jig design, I have a little hook keep there. Uh wire keeper so that's just a bent piece of wire and that keeps the uh, soft plastic up there it doesn't come down well i hope this audio is decent for you guys i i <laughs> at, at least it won't be real windy sounding uh it'll probably be a little blown out because of the bluetooth mic but at least it's under my jacket so it's not going to get the wind noise with it um yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I can only do so much. I'm just a man. I'm just one man. I got nothing, boys and girls. I got nothing. I think I got bit. Oh, I missed him. What in the absolute? Oh, that was that was something with teeth. That was something with teeth. Gosh, I'm so frustrated right now with myself. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna move. I mean, there's fish around. I just don't give a crap about. There he is. What are you? Little walleye? Little walleye. Okay. Well. All right. Okay. Well. I mean. Something. I don't know. Maybe they want a little more horizontal movement out of it. I guess. I don't know. Because that was a little flip pitch 
I'm bringing it in, you know. So I don't know. Maybe this is uh, pretty sad. Such high hopes for this trip. Such high hopes. Well, I just hooked into something big. Had the camera off. Testing out a new spot, and this thing is massive. Don't really know what it is. Probably a catfish, I'm guessing. But we'll see. Oh my god. That's a big freaking walleye. Holy shit. Holy shit. Wow. Okay. Holy guacamole. Wow. That is close to a PB, maybe. I'm gonna keep him in the water as much as I can. 25 and a half. That's a big fish. Yeah, baby. Looks like a gizzard shad, looks like, I'm thinking. She puked that up when I got her up here, so kept her in the net. Uh, I got a shitty net, but kept her in there for that whole time. This is what I caught her on there. It's like a dark green with a gold speckle on it. And then the stiletto on there. Great fish. So, uh, crazy. Super happy about that one. Uh, yeah, let's try and get another one. Hit that thing like a million bucks right in the corner of the mouth. Vertical jigging, of course, because it's all I ever do. So we'll try and see if there's any more in here. They might just move through real quick like that. I don't know. We'll see. It's a pretty good feeling though. I'm just spot locked again on a hump. So it comes up here to like three feet and about a hundred, maybe a hundred feet out. It comes up to three feet. So I'm down at the base of it. And the spot lock is moving me into like 14, coming back down to 20, so. A lot of guys are trolling, because this kind of, it's a flooded river, so the main channel is kind of here, but I'm away from where they're trying to troll, because I don't think they like going to the sides. There's one. Aw, oh, you little bastard. Little drum. Hi, buddy. Hold on. Hold on, little guy. There's another one. What is it? Oh, it's big, but I don't know what it is. No. <sighs> a little bit of mutton there. So that's fishing trip out on Pete and Will Lake. It's not really my home lake, but it's a lake that I really appreciate. It's one of my favorite. I got to travel a little while to get there, but at least I uh, 
I know that I can pretty much get on fish when I go there every time. The plan here for the future, I think, is just to try and integrate a little bit more of what I'm doing uh, hunting-wise, not only just fishing on the channel. I feel like we've done as much as we can with innovating, like, just making our own lures. You can only reinvent the wheel so many times. How many lures have I made on this channel? How many have I done the same way? You can only make so many crankbaits before you're like, that's just another crankbait. Somebody else has done that. There's nothing new under the sun, really, in the fishing industry. Anybody that tells you they got the new and most exciting thing really hasn't done their research. They just don't. It's out there already. Uh, chances are somebody's already got a patent on it. Uh, so if you're... Gosh, dogs. Don't, go, don't get dogs. Don't do it. But so it's just not. There's not a lot of growth i can see i can make another jig i can make another small ice fishing jig i can make an ice fishing spoon or something like that but then we're just kind of repeating the process over and over so if you want to check out my instagram a little bit i have done some stuff with like some pruners and some like uh pole saws making 3d print adaptations for that so i think i'm leaning more towards that in the future we got some exciting stuff coming up in the spring uh actually going to take you guys through uh, a little bit of what's going on outside this channel and outside the fishing space which is kind of exciting i think so i don't know i mean just if you want to hang around hang around if you don't don't but uh hopefully you got some education or entertainment out of this video and if you did maybe leave a like consider subscribing because you'll see another video from me in probably two to three months uh i'm joking hopefully within the next week or so i'll get rolling a little bit more on it it is negative uh six degrees out right now so it's not like i'm really going doing a whole lot so we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I'll hit some late ice too and be out there. But otherwise, uh, we're just going to make videos when something comes up or if something exciting happens or if I actually find old fishing footage like I did here today. So that's just the plan. Always has been. Probably always will be. And uh, until the next one, keep your amps up and wash your hands. <laughs>